Hey, it's Paul McFadden here and welcome to the Property Success Podcast. And today's guest is an absolute cracker. It's Chris DL, which I'm looking forward to introducing and for you guys to hear his story. The whole purpose of this podcast is to inspire those that are looking to get started in a property journey or those that are already in the property game looking to take things to the next level. And the one thing I love about Chris's whole story is he's gone through it all but here's the best part. He's only been in his property journey for less than two years. And when you start to hear his story from when he gets started to where he is just now, it's going to blow your mind because he's had it all in such a short period of time. And I'm looking forward during this podcast to really dig into it, asking some questions that gets me excited about what's possible. And then we can just have that conversation, see how it goes. So Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much for having us, man. I'm excited to be here. So. And you got up at what time this morning to make sure you got here uh, from all the way from Newcastle? <laughs> so I got up at five to take the dog out, but he, um, he just had a look at us and he's like, nah, and just went back to <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Um, so five, about quarter past five, I got on the road, but it's um, freezing down there just now. It was all icy and stuff. So, aye, but I was excited because obviously I've been looking forward to come up and obviously catch up with folk as well, and then talk on this as well. It's quite a good thing to do, I think. Brilliant, love it. I'm glad you're here, Chris. So, uh, let's kick this off with telling us pre-property, yep. right? Because you've only been involved in property for less than a couple of years. So let's go back to mm -hmm. to the the younger Chris, I guess, and yep. your background. So let us know a bit more about that. And it would be good to hear about how you went from a transition from living up here to going down to Newcastle and mm -hmm. your background there, and then we can get into the property chat. Yep, so I had quite a varied background. So my brother always uh, used to wind me up because it could be a bit of a job hopper. So he says I had more interviews than Pierce Morgan. <laughs> so I was like, done the call centre circuits, so like Virgin Media, Sky, all that sort of stuff. Um, I was a holiday rep for a couple of seasons abroad. So I was in like Cavos, Ibiza and Magaluf. Um, so that obviously, all these sort of stuff I did actually transitions quite well because of your soft skills that you, you pick up on the way then ended up in business to business sales with Yellow Pages um, which was a tough slog trying to sell websites and stuff like that and then ended up in recruitment and um, kind of just fell into it by default and won a good contract at the Commonwealth Games like way back in 2014 which was worth a good bit of commission and always in the back of my head my uncle moved to London when he was like 18 and um, he retired nine years early because of his properties and he did accounting and that always stuck with us so I had a call with him and his, his advice was to, to basically get myself into property. So got myself, obviously, like my bike lets and stuff like that. But um, I didn't speak to my mum and dad, so I kind of got left with the family house um, and there was a bit of equity in that when we sold it. So retrained an accountant. Um, while I was doing that, I like, had a couple of businesses in the background as well, like doing sales and stuff like that. Um, I ended up with a sweep shop at one point uh, as well, which I sold just January 2020 and lockdown hit in March. So I couldn't get a, a job at the time. I'd finished my degree, couldn't get a, a, a job. So I did my master's in accounting in Newcastle. I had my partner, who's my fiance now, so she didn't want to move up to Scotland. So she was in London working a good job at the Guardian newspaper. She didn't want to come up to Airdrie, didn't fancy it, I don't know why. <laughs> and I didn't fancy going down there when I weighed it up because I had a few high at the time and stuff like that. And I just thought, I'm not going to have a good lifestyle down there. So I got the job at PwC, um, which is one of the, the biggest accounting firms in the world. Um, initially, it was for Leeds, and by the time I accepted the job, it'd been filled. We met in Newcastle because my brother lives down there. Um, she went to university there, so we kind of just sat down and says, "Well, why don't we we go Newcastle?" And it's it's like the butterfly effect, and it? it's kind of led to all this kind of stuff. And imagine if I got that job in Leeds, I wouldn't be sitting here just now doing this. Because so it's pretty mad when you sit and think about it. Like that kind of thing has had this whole ripple effect. Um, so I, it was quite a varied background, mainly sales, um, retrained into accounting and just like, you know, I like to talk and stuff like that. I think uh, I didn't have the personality for accounting, so I'm here now um, in property, but very, mainly sales, I would say, um, before I did that. So I guess with your uncle telling you to get involved in property, that's always a good thing when you've got that good influence around you. Yep. You're seeing the example that he set himself by having his own portfolio. And then you've been involved in property prior to coming along and yep. spending time with us at, at Protege. So what was the difference in the sense of um, being involved in property to then thinking that you need to go and get educated? Because there's many people out there who have this attitude and mindset whether, well, I've got a couple of properties or I've done X, Y, and Z, would I need to learn about property? Yeah. And I guess that when people come along to your protege program or if people won't get educated, when you start opening up and seeing there's way more strategies, way more things that you can actually do to grow your property business, it opens up your game to a whole different level. So yep. what was the trigger point for you to get you to consider getting education in your and, and your whole property journey yourself? Yeah, so at the start of lockdown, I'd obviously sold my shop. So I had the money sitting. 
And I was just like, I could see where it was going. I had par parcels coming up every day from Nike and ASOS and all that, booking holidays for when we're getting back out. So I booked like five holidays and I'm just like, I'm going to blow this here if I don't do something with it. And I'd, I'd followed Richard for a while. So I got involved in the fixed percentage return stuff for Richard. And from there, naturally, you just start to speak to him. And then you, you obviously get involved a bit more. And I was always interested in property, but I had that mindset, like thought I knew it all basically. Um, but I knew nothing in reality. Um, I was constantly looking at deals. I was doing everything back to front, basically. And I had a deal fall through. So it was a flat in, in Airdrie. I had it all agreed. And I had it all agreed at like 50 grand. It was just, I call them grunters. So they're <laughs> kind of low purchase price, high yielders. And um, I had that fall through. And I had the money sitting. And I was like, well, I'm just going to blow this on something if I don't. So I messaged Richard and just said, should I do a protege, essentially? He's like, I like going. And I messaged yourself at the time. You're like, speak to Sean. Went and put the money in because like the way I used to see it at the time, I wouldn't spend money on myself, but I'd go and buy nice clothes and go to holidays and stuff like that. And you're thinking like it's a bit backward when you actually think about it. So for that investment that I've made, it's, it's paid off, I was going to say tenfold, but it's much more than that. Because obviously some of the deals that I've done off the back of doing that wouldn't have been possible if I wasn't in that group and around that sort of people. So I think it's just like changing your mindset and, and turn it's an investment in yourself. But also for me, when I did Protégé, it was like, I felt like I had to make up for lost time because the rates were so low when I was buying at the start. I was making good money here, but I was just like, I could have made so much more there. And like, I was essentially just grafting hard, getting a deposit together and like saving every penny and putting everything back in. I was like, realistically, I could have been doing all these deals. Like I, I've been doing houses with none money down, big deals. And it's like, but I didn't know that at the time. I just thought you went in right move and you got 25% together and bought a house. I just thought that's how it operated. I didn't know about this whole off market stuff and the ways you can finance deals, but it was like a trigger moment for us. Um, and then obviously from there, I went back to work after, I took the week off for Protégé, went back to work and my head was just elsewhere at the time. So my missus kind of was on at me because things didn't happen for a long time. And everybody around me was just like, well, the state of this guy and that, like, who does he think he is, like talking this and that. So I had all that in the background. So you had everybody around you thinking I'm the one that's nuts. And so, so before you get into that, because I, I really want to talk I, about that because I know that that, that was a, a big change in the way mm. that you started approaching your property business. But how did that transition happen? Was it off the back of protege and seeing what's possible as well as this kind of burning desire with your whole background of having a couple of businesses and mm -hmm. just wanting more from life because you just went and got a master's Aye. in accountancy, Aye. which is, is, a, is, a, is a big commitment for <laughs> most people, isn't it? Yeah. So you've invested that time and energy to get a master's in accountancy, you're working with one of the top accountancy firms in the world, <laughs> which is for a lot of people is a career path that's kind of like setting you to all different levels and be amazing to have on your CV and everything else. So the funny thing about that, that path that you chose, that some people around you, like you've just said there, must have thought, are you off your fucking head? <laughs> Like, what, what are you actually <laughs> doing? <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, I, I remember I get pulled into the office with the partners um, and I had to do, like, an independence thing with them because they were, like, they didn't like the property stuff and I was posting on LinkedIn. And they were all sitting. I was talking to the guy and his package was a million pound, like, because it's readily available at the burn. His package was a million pound the year before, but he doesn't invest any of it. You're not allowed to buy stocks because you're auditing them. So I'm just like, what's he doing with his money? So for me, it was just thinking, these guys are on their fixed mindsets, like, work your way up. But... My uncle was an accountant. He retired nine years early. He'd done well, but he said he's got PTSD from it because the hours are crazy. So for me, the, the transition point was, yeah, I've made the commitment to do my master's and stuff like that. It cost me 11 grand to do it and I didn't get any funding because I'd already had my funding for my honours and stuff. So I just thought to myself, like, what is the worst that can happen here if I go for this? Like, I, there's always going to be jobs there. Like you said, I've got that in my CV that was with them for almost two years. Like, I literally, um, I moved to a smaller firm at the time and they were giving me hassle because I thought it would be better, they'll be more understanding. But actually it was worse. So that's what gave me the, the transition. I was like, I know I can always go back to a job because I've done things in my career that I've probably lived about 10 lives in my, my life so far and um, with some of the stuff that I've done and like the PwC stuff, I, I speak to investors. It just comes into conversation. And for me, it just gives me much more credibility. So I was just looking at them and like busy season, for example, January to March, you weren't allowed a day off. Uh, you're expected to work. Your contract was 37 and a half hours, but you're expected more realistically 55, 60. And I just thought I broke it down in the early and I was like, I'm better off working in Asda, McDonald's, if, I, if I'm putting these hours in realistically. But like you say, like, I think it's something like only 1% of people apply got a job. So they were all like, you're blowing this opportunity. And to me, I was like, I've had my own like, schedule before and done my own thing and I much prefer that to go and being on someone else's dime but 
I was getting charged out as a first year at 146 an hour, but only seeing £10 an hour. And I'm like, what, like something's got to give here, do you know what I mean? So that's what kind of gave me that. It was good to have that taste of going back in because it's gave me that fuel to go back out into the world of business. And I keep my business card on my visor as well, just like every day, just to look at it because I'm like, we can't go back there. Because it's it, to people, it's a dream. And I, it's like, I've done well to get in. It's a good thing I accomplished. But to me, it was a, a nightmare being in there. Yeah. And um, it's just, it's horrible. There's no personality. Like, me and you'd be sitting, I'd be auditing you. And if people would email you instead of, like, you're sitting there and they're emailing you, asking for stuff. I'm like, just have a conversation with them. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, like, they were all slagging us off. And they probably still do, but I don't care now. Like, when I did my event the other week, it was 200 yards for the office. And I was like, this time last year, I was in there depressed, basically. Like, what am I going to do in my life? Because I felt like I'd made a wrong choice. And then within a very short space of time, I've thrown an event on. People came from Essex, Plymouth, which is basically France, all the way over from Scotland to, to hear what I've got to say. So that's what I thought as well. I was like, on one hand, you've got these people like asking my advice, but then you go into the office and they're making you feel stupid or you're one minute late to this. And it's like... I think I'm then on the right idea here, not them. Um, but it's like they've got the very fixed mindset that we work for a big company. This is what you do. This is uh, what comes with the, the the price you need to pay. But um, uh, for me, I'd rather put that time in my own business, which I, I did. And uh, I spent a lot of time, um, probably too much in the company's time towards the end. But I'm here now and it's working out quite well. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how it's been going. I absolutely love that. It's brilliant. And that there for most people is like a massive risk. Yeah. You know what you're, you're throwing that away. Now I never had a master's in yeah. IT. So I graduated <laughs> with the first person in my whole family with an IT degree. And when I did, did my transition <laughs> to go full time, well, it wasn't even going full time in property time, but just to explore the conversation or getting involved in property. Yeah. It's just that this whole concept of, are you crazy? You you off your head, so yeah. it's amazing to hear that. Um, it's very similarities there, but that you just you've went chose a path that was right for you because you looked and it was similar to me. I looked up the the career path and thought that that's just not for me. Yeah, you know, and you've saw that yourself. Now, with all that said, you you obviously came along to to Protege, and mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and I guess that you'll be fine with me saying this because we had a chat about this prior to the the podcast. But it wasn't like it was plain sailing for no. the. It's not like you just came to Protege then the next week after you're doing deals right yeah. now I'd love to have a little chat about that because you know it's the first um, uh, uh, six to nine months for you was a bit of a challenge yeah. and it took a little bit of a mindset shift for you and once you made that shift it's almost like the floodgates have just opened and it's just went absolutely crazy and the reason why I want to talk about that is because I think that shift is incredibly important because that shift is something that maybe takes people years to just go shit and make the shift. Mm -hmm. But it took you six to nine months. Yeah. So for people being aware of that, because it's a lot about someone's attitude, it will make a big, big difference. So it'd be good to to hear about your experience <clears throat> having left and what you were doing in property, <clears throat> some of the challenges that you overcame, and then what had that, what happened to make that shift? Yeah. So I had quite a lot of uh, obstacles. Obviously, my first one was I had all these people around me basically try to put me down and, and so that was the main thing. So you've got a hundred odd people in an office, you know they're talking about you day to day and they're making you feel stupid. It was almost like they were trying to like get us out the door. So you had that day to day. So for 50 odd hours a week, I'm in there getting laughed at to my face and behind my back. So that's for a start. You go home, you're trying to work on your business, you're having stuff fall through, you're getting constant rejections, like st you're going on all these viewings and nothing's coming the back of it. So your partner, she was very supportive of me and she said actually a couple of months ago, she says it was just heartbreaking to watch me go through all this rejection while well, I had all the hassle at work as well. But um, she did have confidence in me and my brother said the same things. Like I knew, always knew you'd do well because you've, you've just got such a passion for it. And I think if you're passionate about it and you work hard, it's impossible to fail. But when it comes to setbacks, I, I managed to get a deal for myself a couple of months out of Protégé, but I had such a hassle with the build on it. I had like every everything that could have went wrong did. Um, but it all worked out in the end. But it, it took like six months to do a two bedroom full like refurb, which should really take four to six weeks if you had the right build team there so I had that experience with my money being tied up in that and I couldn't really do anything about it because of cowboy builders then I had a portfolio of six that was sourced onto a, a sourcer with 100,000 followers on Instagram and we had comparables there for about 55 grand a flat he was getting it for 45 he got downvalued 30% and the deal fell through so that was another kind of negative thing because that was my first deal and I was like this will be such good social proof for me had that fall through, then I was just con constant things falling through. Then I had another fall through happen and I was just very negative about it because 
probably subconsciously, but just all around me, people make me feel stupid. So I thought, like, they're, they're obviously saying that. I'm like, this guy's this, this guy's that. And I spoke to Richard Dixon. I says, I just had an R1 fall through. This guy's this and this guy's that. And he said, well, what could you have done? And it was such a, like, simple comment that he made. But I was like, that's so true. So this was, like, the November time um, when the portfolio fell through. And I was so close to giving it up. But I thought to myself, like, this new new year next month, I don't like this job I'm in. I'll be able to walk into a job tomorrow elsewhere because of where I've been. So I went to a small independent, it's a large firm, but it's the largest independent one um, in the UK for audit. They turn over about 30 million. So I spoke with them and I laid it all on the table in the interview about my property stuff. They are like, that's great. So I thought, we'll go into the new year. I've got gardening leave, so I've got a month to get really good momentum going into work. And then with the mindset shift, I literally, the guy I bought that house off that I was telling you I had the nightmare with the builders, I messaged him saying, by the way, I bought this house off you last year. Um, I'm looking to buy just now. And he brought four deals to me off market and I managed to sell two of them straight away. So I was just like, just from having that mad mindset shift, it's like weird because it feels like things just fall into place. So I had so much go wrong in that time. And then I changed my mindset. I messaged the guy, literally got four deals like that. And then you just go and get this momentum. Then there was an agent. I met him. We were in Paris for the football, and I was I was with him the other day. We met in a coffee shop. Um, I was sitting with my dog. He came up and he petted him, gave me his business card. He's, a, he's an estate agent for a big firm in Newcastle, and um, I just worked on him for months. But he said like they don't really take sources seriously because there's a lot of cowboys out there. So he eventually gave me two properties that he wasn't able to shift. It sat in the market for a while, and I sold the two of them that day. And now we went on a golf day with them, like with an auction company. And he said, like, I don't actually want to invite you because we're giving you all the stuff rather than the <laughs> auction company. So you're just like, just off the back of a chance meeting in a coffee shop and being persistent and, and just letting them know what you're doing and just following up on your word as well. But I had obviously that nine months of just absolute shit, basically. Sorry for the language, but um, just eating that rubbish for nine months, but having to go through that process. So like, I know what it's like. You're working a full-time job. You're getting so much resistance from everywhere and you almost have to be quite delusional in your beliefs. I was saying to my missus, like, I'm going to be doing this deal and I'm going to be doing that. And she turned around one day and she said, you're talking about doing all these deals? Like, nothing's happened and you're about to lose your job because of it. So she's like, what the hell's going on? Um, but like that kind of delusion just carries you forward. And then I've had all that experience to try to build it while I'm doing my full-time job. I was like getting up in the morning and doing a couple hours in the morning, then doing like my lunch hour, then doing nighttime, the full weekends, doing all that. So it's almost like doing an apprenticeship is what I say to folk, because you, you learn your trade there. And I had that horrendous stuff happen as well. And then obviously getting frauded off an investor that we're going to talk about yeah, as well. Yeah, let, let, let's definitely chat about Aye. that because that's that's an <laughs> eye opener for, for so many people as yeah. well. Because you've had um, you've had so much in your um, you know year and a half journey in property, yeah. it's crazy. You know, and, and what I love when I'm listening to you, it's like a reflection to me because there's so <laughs> much that you're going through that I just remind myself of. I'm like, fucking hell, mate. It's like we're living both the same <laughs> life, you know? It's crazy um, having a lot of that. But what I love what you're sharing there, and I'm hoping that the listeners or those that are watching are, are really paying attention here is, is that for so many people, when they're looking to make a change, because they maybe want more money, maybe they want a, a career shift, whatever it may be, and of course, people are online, they're exploring and looking at different opportunities. And property is one of the most common ones that pop up. But of course, it's one of those ones that a lot of people are just not sure what should they buy and what's the right strategy? Should they be buying now? So there's a lot of uncertainty there. And then depending on who you're talking to in your, you know, your social circles, some people will tell you, no, you shouldn't be doing that and who you're listening to. So you've got all of this going on. And then when someone then takes that step to go, well, it doesn't really matter what other people are saying. It doesn't matter what's happening in the news. I'm going to take a step forward and I'm going to learn more about property. Then because the people around them have been telling them that they shouldn't be and they're learning about this, then they start having this friction in a sense of, oh, so you're doing something that we told you not to do or you shouldn't be doing and now you're away learning this. And you know, and then you get that that envy of others that starts to creep in. And then you start having you know other people telling you and doubting you that you can't do it. And it's almost like you're having like this, this battle with people around you. It's crazy. And you obviously experienced that in the workplace. It's great that you had a partner that's supportive, but there's many people who have partners that are also not supportive, which yeah. is a challenge too in itself. And I love when you talk about that, you know, almost becoming um, as if you're just 
delusional about success and yeah. that that there resonates with me so much because I remember myself growing up like I was convinced I was going to be successful but nobody <laughs> around me was convinced so I'm loving when I'm hearing this it's uh, brilliant and it's almost and I'm glad that you're saying it because I know that there's people that are going through this in their journey as well yeah I just know that there's many people it's the vast majority it's the highest percentage because what you've achieved in less than two years is more than I achieved in my first five years in property. Yeah. Right. So, so I mean, from that point of view, it's unfucking believable. But for most people, they could have that success in a much quicker period of time if they go over this part here. Yeah. This is the part they need to get over, and th this is why I'm talking about it here because at the beginning of someone's journey, you're doing something different. You're around the network that don't know you as a property guy. Yeah. So when you start getting involved in property, of course that's going to then stretch other people's comfort zones. It's going to make people think differently and everything else, good or for bad. So it's good that you have had some support of people around you and you almost need to take the fuel of those around you that's, yep. that are doubting you and buying into your own delusion. Yep. Like I can actually do this because there's probably been days where you actually, and you said yourself that you almost th thought that I'm going to quit. So it's just that turning point, isn't it? When you mm -hmm. need to make a decision and it was just you having that shift in your mindset and then just sending over a message and being a bit more upbeat and positive and then allowing that to happen. Yep. And that's what you've started to see a lot of success from it. Right. Now, even though, because we're going to fast forward and talk about the success that you're having because right now you're, you're, you're running um, what seems like a hundred mile an hour with <laughs> so much going on, which is super exciting. Yeah. So before we get into all the exciting stuff, that you're working on you mentioned there about the, the fraud case yeah and i asked you before this do you, do you want to talk about it because i think it'd be I, great to talk about it it's a hundred it's a good story to tell obviously it's, i'm laughing about it now but at the time it was devastating i put about 30 kilos on my stress eating and stuff like that um but basically i had a, a guy that I, I knew in my circle he had a lot of properties and um, well, i thought he still had them he clearly doesn't now so we got obviously talking after i did protege and stuff he's putting offers in on portfolios and, and things like that so Basically, we've been talking back and forth and we knew each other before and I knew he had these houses, so I thought like, he'd be a good guy to get in business with. Um, but I was basically being groomed <laughs> for the, the sucker punch. Um, so essentially, I like, got my, a loan, which I middlemaned, um, and it, it obviously went belly up. So the the people involved wanted to go to the police, um, but obviously I managed to kind of get it sorted because I was like, look, if you go there, you're not going to get paid because he's going to be behind bars. So I managed to get it sorted, um, and obviously I've been paying it out my own pocket in the meantime as well, which is a lot of money. <laughs> it was like well over, just over 100 grand. So I've had that all going on while, and this was like probably about May time this year it all came out. So I had no long after going full time, this all came out. So... I had that in the background as well, and obviously I've been working through that just now. So I think that's kind of added fuel to the fire because I was speaking to people at the time and I was trying to be up, like, it was like you said, the mindset sh shift. I was laughing to someone about it on the phone because I was like, how fucking stupid am I? Because you're looking back at the little red flags. Like we had documents from lawyers which turned out to be forged. We had emails from lawyers with contracts and it was like fake emails they'd done and stuff like that. So it was quite high end at their level, what they did. Um, but I was just like, I was that focused on like, oh, I'm going to do all this business off the back of it. Um, they've kind of took advantage of it, but it's all being sorted now. It's obviously all getting paid up and stuff and the investors are happy as well. So it's um, that I've managed to kind of stand in and, and deal with that situation. So it's good that it's happened that early on in a way because it's, you know what it's like if you lose money, it teaches you such a lesson. Yeah. So I know now like that right, that's happened very early on because imagine I got all this traction and then something like that happened, it would wipe us out, like, realistically, because yeah. you're only used to getting these wins, whereas I was just used to having all these losses, that I'm having these wins, and I'm like, I don't want these to stop. So, like, yeah. I'll fucking, I'll be up at five in the morning with my can of monster, like, <laughs> sitting, hammering folk, like, I message, I message someone at half five this morning, like, right, what's happening with this day? And he's like, mate, when do you stop? But <laughs> I genuinely, like, for me, I found something I enjoy, and, like, I go to bed at night now, and I can't wait to get up the next day. Because I'm like, my mind's racing at night and I need to do this tomorrow and I've got this and got this. Yeah. Whereas, see, before, like, I was this time even last year, I was just dreading it and my days were just horrendous because I couldn't wait to finish to go out and just try and build this thing on the side. And then, obviously, like, fast forward a year, um, I've been bumped for 100 grand. I'm still loving life. Do you know what I mean? But, but do you know what's, what's, admirable about, <coughs> what's admirable about that is that 
you stepped up mm-hmm. and you made sure the investor was sorted. Yep. You know, you went, you made sure that they were going to get paid, they are getting covered from your own money, you sorted that there, and then you effectively going after that person to make sure you get some sort of agreement so yep. you can get repaid. And uh, a loss like that, because it is, of course it's getting sorted and it'll, it'll take time to sort, um, but a loss like that can take many people out of the game. Yeah. And one of the things that I think is important about that, especially in this property game, is your reputation is so important. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I believe that because the property game is actually a small network yep. in the grand scheme of things. And the last thing you want is your name to be tarnished. It would set you back tenfold. In fact, it could take you out of the game completely. And that's why I think what we do in terms of a protege is really getting people to understand a couple of key things. One, um, to really do your due diligence, not to just trust someone yep. at face value because, you know, everyone's going to present a deal to you in the best possible light. It's just unfortunate that you were literally like frauded right where <laughs> fake documents and all of that kind of yeah. stuff that's going to be hard to to no matter how much due diligence you do it's going to be hard right <laughs> yeah but the reality is you need to do your due diligence but also just going for the right mindset and attitude if you're borrowing money yeah joint venture partners taking an investment that you've got the right intent to pay it back yeah and i've been in situations myself before again like it's like a mirror chris it's like a fucking mirror <laughs> right uh, i've been in situations where um i have had people around me that have taken advantage right yeah. and when i've had investors involved as well where i have personally made sure that they have been covered yeah made sure that they get their money and interest as well and it never ever works out the the most perfect way at the time but it protects your reputation when you're a man of your word and you make sure people get their money back yeah and then you learn from those it's lessons learned you don't want to allow those things to take you out of the game because then you've not learned anything from it. It's like, well, how can I do my due diligence better going forward? How can I be more, um, you know, protective in the sense of my own, you know, money to make sure I'm getting the right returns and the right projects? And if I'm bringing investors' money, how do I look after them? So I guess you got a lot of lessons learned through that, uh, you know, but that was also motivation for you to really double down your property business to to make more money, I guess. Yeah, because right, it left us in a mess at the time financially because, like, I obviously had like stuff ongoing I was relying on the, mo- the money I was going to make off that deal coming in so I've like got things in the background and I was just like what am I going to do here so it was like I was looking the other day because um I was like when I got asked to do the Scottish property me I was like I'm going to actually sit back and see what I've achieved in this year and I sat because obviously I've got a very good memory and like I'm, the people call me rain man so I just went right this area I've done deals this address so I just like st- wrote them all down and it was something like 60 deals that I did and since January 23 till now, which is November 23, almost December. And then 17 houses for myself, like mixture of flips and bite lets and service accommodations. But like I didn't take stock of it, like how far I've come to that because I've just been that focused and day to day, right? I need to hustle hard to, to make sure everybody's okay. So it's been obviously a, a very difficult situation at the time and I'm still carrying the scars from it with my, my belly for the, the, the stress eating, but I'm working on getting that down. But it's just like, in a way, it's, I'm glad it's happened because it happened very early on. So I know now if I get further on my journey, you know, you kind of trust people, even if you, you think they're nice people, like, because when money gets involved, people turn different. And it's like, like it's good for the reputation because you're showing how it's sh- like how you react when shit hits the fan. Um, so it's not like all rosy rosy, and you're seeing all the wins on social media. But like people in my circle knew what I was going through in the background, and they were kind of pushing me to tell my story on it. So I think it's the right time to share it now that I'm kind of out of the woods with it. Um, but at the t- I mean, like at the start of the year, if I did, if I still had that negative mindset because I was working still at the start of the year as well. You're on what twenty seven grand a year. You got up to forty grand a year. It's like fucking two and a half years salary, man. And I'm like, but realistically, that's not going to pay it off because you'd be paying it off forever. So I'm like, you need to go and do it. And then it just shows you what's possible as well. Like I'm one person, and five million pound worth of broke property I've brokered personally is one person in the year. So it's like there's that much money out there. You just need a fucking small piece of it to be set. So it's like just go out and get after it. Do you know what I mean? And then you start putting yourself out there, and people see what you're doing. You connect with people and then you start doing deals with them. Do you know what I mean? And then it's like a kind of snake shedding its skin in it. Well, I'm not, I'm not calling myself a snake. Sorry, it's probably the wrong one. But, you, but I get, get what you mean. Uh, I you understand. get better yeah, people. Yeah. And then like uh, one of my investors, he, he had a call with me in February and he was only intending on buying a house in Sheffield. And I was like, I don't, don't, don't do that. And he does solar panels and basically asked him for a fee on the call. And he, he played the game with me and paid it. And he's like, I've never had anybody do that. He's like, I'm really impressed with how you've closed me because he does obviously hard sales for a living. 
and he's bought something like eight houses a share now and he's just like he, he paid for the staff off at one point like during the year because he's like we need to like rein things in because too much competition's coming up and then I offered him a deal the next day and he's like I respect the, the boldness of it like almost he's like that's what I was like but it's like having a free business mentorship off him because he's turned it around now he's, he's company thankfully and things are going well but you're getting like he's way ahead of the journey and I'm and if I was still working in an office like auditing for clients I wouldn't be talking to people like that and you have their conversations and you realise like this is doable because he said you've got that hunger and like you're, you're, a, you're, you're, you're an animal it will work so you're like you'll be here one day but you're getting to speak to these people day to day and then they just become your friends so we'd like talk away I was in London last week we met up for lunch and stuff and we're talking about how we can kind of do business again and how we can do things going forward but I would never have been having their conversations if I didn't go and do protege because you're just that fixed in your mindset. It's like a, I call it a scheme mentality, basically. You're just fixed in it. And it's like, nah, it's yeah. not for me. But when you actually realise, like, the opposite, like, online, for example, as well, I was talking to someone about this on Tuesday. I was in Paris. Someone sent me 40 grand there and then to go and do a flip. I'm sitting in a bar in Paris and I'm like, could you imagine him doing this 20 years ago? Like, the opportunity you've got in your fingertips and you're sitting closing deals like that and you're just, like, when you actually sit and think about it, it's pretty mad and it's it's like exciting as well because I feel like I'm just getting started so it's um, ah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind and it's had a lot of downs but the ups are all coming now which is great yeah. but the downs teach you like like don't rest in your laurels as well so I've had a good mix of, of, of shit happening in my time and I just think it's good to have that because if you're just constantly having wins and then you have that setback you're not used to dealing with it whereas I've had some extreme losses, so it's like I'm prepared for anything now. Yeah. And like the, the, at the end of the day, like I always say as well, so like a deal almost fell through the other day and I was just like, well, the sun's still going to come up in the morning, do you know what I mean? So like we'll find another deal, it's yeah. fine. Whereas before I just get so hung up for days on it, like he's this and they should have done this and they should have done that. But like you just, it's business, isn't it? It's at the end of the day, business is business. So yeah. it's like you just need to get on with it and there'll be another deal that comes. And thankfully they are at the moment, so Absolutely. Now, work ethic will always outperform talent. But if you have talent as well as work ethic, then you're going to accelerate and things. And the yeah. good thing about that there is that talent is something that you can, you know, train, you can learn, you can grow. So the good thing about you is with your background and, you know, especially in sales and just communicating and, and, and known numbers and stuff as well, you've used, you mentioned it right at the beginning, the soft skills that, yep. that's really important that everyone should be working on improving anyway. And having that work ethic, that determination and having that motivation, you know, you've got the perfect formula that's just came together to get you these results, Aye. you know, and it's amazing for me. I love it. I love when I get to chat to people, especially like yourself, that's gone through this whirlwind in the first couple of years. And we mentioned it just before the podcast. Imagine where you're going to be in a couple of years. Yeah. You know, never mind 10 years, Aye, in a couple, couple of years. <laughs> you know, I'm like, fucking hell. Like, <laughs> geez, oh, this is nuts. It's insane. Aye. You know, uh, it's like at the start, I was still working at the time, and I was in, in February. I was working at a smaller firm, and I thought, right, I'm going to get everything going, and I'll still do my my AC. I wanted to become a chartered accountant because I just thought that would be really cool to have. And I was about eight exams through out of fifteen, so I was almost there, and I had all my practical experience. But I was sitting with a director at one of the top banks in the world in the fucking Swiss Alps, talking about doing property again, doing business. And then I was going back to work on the Monday and like they pulled out my contract and like, no, no, you can't post on LinkedIn. And I was just like, so it was fine for me at the interview, but now I'm in the door, it's like, it's fine till it isn't. So I was just thinking to myself, like if I'm over there and he's seeing value in me, but then I'm going back to go, being a glorified admin assistant at times for 24 grand a year, I think it was. I, I took a pay cut to go to this place. I was just thinking like, I'm going to listen to him because he's broken billion pound deals all the time. And he's given me like saying to me, basically, I'm, I'm good for advice to him when he's dealing with all these massive comp corporations as part of his job. So that gave you the confidence. And then like, like the deal went really well with him. Um, the numbers came in exactly what we thought. So then he introduced me to his friends. One of them was like the head of Sony in Europe, like PlayStation. He was the head of finance. His friend was this other guy and the two of them made an app together and they exited it for eight figures. So I went back out to Switzerland and met them um, done a presentation to them and then they've invested money in projects and we're talking about how we can work together long term so it's like you're literally dealing with, with folk that have got high net worth here and you're, you're like friends with them as well and it's like I said to the previous guy it's like a free business mentorship because you're talking to these people and rather than saying oh did you see that fucking goal at Celtic scored in the Champions League the other <laughs> night you're talking about 
seven and eight figure deals and it's like they're just no interest in talking about the Fitbit now do you know what I mean so like someone texts me oh dear have you watched this thing on the telly and I was like I'm, I'm genuinely not interested like my PlayStation I, I, I said this as well like when I moved to Newcastle um it was still COVID at the time and I had some money saved up and I was like do you know what I'm just going to blow it enjoy my year and go back to work and kind of reset and I just feel like I wasted that full year so I sat and played the PlayStation all day like Call of Duty FIFA and all that um, but I'm really thankful that I wasted that time because it's taught me now just to like make up for it so um, and that's what I always say to my missus as well is like I'd love to sit and do it but just like I'm not interested because this gives me a buzz and I, I get to do something every day that I don't class as work like I was I was driving about with someone the other day and we were doing a deal together and I was just like how can you class this as work like we're literally just driving about like Newcastle's a nice place as well, you're out in some lovely scenery and get to see some nice places. Like that house we've got the other day is a fucking castle in the back garden. So you're like, my, like I always think to myself, they'll all be in the office just now just slagging me off hammering off spreadsheets, but I'm out doing fucking <laughs> massive deals. So it's like, who, who is the winner at the end of the day? So I'm just quite happy that I'm doing something I have a real passion for. And obviously your energy kind of attracts people as well. So you're getting all these cool people come into your life almost by default. Yeah. And then, like, you're at the stage where I said this as well, like, you're doing events and stuff and people are all coming up to you and, like, you're almost like a celebrity at times. So when we did that event in the, the North East, um, we weren't expecting 50 people to turn up. We sold the 50 and we got almost 90. But we had a lot of people in the room that have been in the game for 20 years in the North East and, and one of them messaged me saying, I've never seen a crowd like that because it was, like, all investors and stuff like that. And they're just, like, it was such a brilliant crowd and a brilliant event. And... I think that was like my fourth networking event I've ever been to and I fucking put it on. So it's just like to pull stuff like that off is pretty cool. But it's just all about the delusion, like you believe. Like I was like, we'll, we'll do it and we'll do 100 when we get, when we've got 50, I was like, we'll do 100. And then obviously you're getting to meet all these people and you're doing stuff off the back of it. And you're just obviously meeting people for different walks of life, but all successful people. So you're just picking good knowledge for people every day when you're speaking to them. You're just having a conversation and they're just giving you brilliant advice just off the back of conversations. Whereas... Again, I always go back. If I was working in the office, it'd be like you've not. You need to do this for five o'clock. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't be having the conversation. It's all about work. Like do this, and that's your kind of your place. It was like a hierarchy. Yeah. Um. So, like for example, at PwC, you weren't allowed to email people over a certain rank. They had to like that. You did have to email you. You weren't allowed to email them and stuff. And I'm like, it's twenty twenty three, man. Do you know what I mean? Like I couldn't care if he's a a partner or not. Like, he, like I'll go and speak to them. Um. But I was pretty mad. Again, I always go back because it's it's only a year ago. So. You always think to yourself, like, if you can do this and do this and do this. And I've literally achieved that within a year. But I didn't know, like, I was just sitting out and just winning every day. So I was just focusing on compounding the daily wins. And I've actually had a time to step back and reflect because it's so, been so chaotic with the getting bumped off the guy and stuff like that, that I've just been that focused on making things right. I've stepped back and I'm like, geez, I've actually done all this in a year. So it's actually exciting us now because I'm, I'm basically almost an even keel and then I feel like that's me getting started. So if if that's me almost 100 deals in, doing portfolios and, and 600 grand flips, and that's me just getting started, what's going to happen in a couple of years, like you said? So I'm really looking forward to what the, the future brings as well. What's crazy about what you're saying there is that not only have you traded on, um, you know, loads of deals, right? 60 plus deals. You've still been building your portfolio. You're joint venturing with so many people as well because you're, you know, you're, when you've got deals people want to get around what you're up to yeah. and, and be involved you know and then more importantly you've now started to go into the SA strategy and you mentioned about some great locations that's yeah. going to be perfect so you've got a lot going on you've got a great foundation you've got a foundation that takes people normally many years to try and do and you've done it in a short period of time yeah. and because you've been so driven and so motivated to go out there and actually to make this and having that passion and desire and more importantly is that when someone changes their environment their life will change massively and that's what you've seen because of your whole first year in your property journey with all that you know shit that you had to deal with with everyone around you and then separating yourself from that, getting around a different environment, traveling to Switzerland, getting around, you know, these people with different mindsets who've had big exits in their businesses and, you know, running your own events, getting all these investors. And when you start to change that network, you, you, opportunities open up that you never saw before. Yeah. And this is what I love about what you're saying here. It's like for a lot of people, it's, it's 
not only pushing through those setbacks and that rejection and, you know, all the people around you who are trying to deter you from where you want to go and tell you how it should be done. And then your environment, a lot of people are attached to the environment. You've broken through those things, you you know, which is not easy, by the way. Yes. But when you break through those, it's amazing how your life just starts to dramatically change. Aye. And I love it. I really do. Aye, it's, it's been mad. Like, I was at, a, like, a wedding in France a couple of months ago as well, and the guys are very successful. He's in, like, private equity. And then uh, so many people I was talking to there, they're all, like, commodities, and they're all on millions a year. And, like... We got talking to some of them and obviously you hear the accent, I'm a bit rough around the edges and very brash and you you could see them switch off like at the start, like thinking, who's this guy, man? But then within like half an hour, they're all like around you. They just, like one guy gave me his number. He was actually messaging me this morning. He's a director at Goldman Sachs and he was talking about funding a deal for me the other day. Um, but it was just like, he was at, he's had a deadline to hit work and I was away and then I managed to get it funded. So we, we, we caught up in it and like, I wouldn't be having their conversations if I was still working with folk, like you said. So... You're, you're around all these people and they're just on a different level because they're doing these deals and stuff like that and you're, you're like that I could do that too there's nothing really stopping us because you've got that intelligence you've got the, the background to do it and the, the good thing is I've got that much knowledge and property so I'm grateful at the start that I did all the bike let stuff and kind of had a good grounding and then it's like right I've got the grounding let's like scale up now and, and use my skills so the SA stuff's obviously going to be a big strategy for me going on because there's just much more money in it um, and that was one of the things that allowed me to quit my job as well because I had two running at the time and they were netting like 1500 quid a month each after all my costs so that was my salary was 1600 after tax at the start of the year so that kind of had that comfort blanket I suppose and that i had that coming in and like one of them's running just now so i, I sold one of them due to the licensing because it was a top four flat but the other one's still running i've got like 16 days this month at like 110 a night so i'm going to still net a decent salary off that um, and imagine you could get 10 of them so like like you say about the goals i've I've already sat and set my goals out for next year and one of them is like add 10 grand a month cash flow because I know if I set a grand a month cash flow and I miss it, I'm not going to have much. Whereas if I set fucking 10 and miss it, I could be on five or six. So it's all about having the kind of, the, the stupid big goals and like at the end of the day, it's not actually that stupid because the momentum we've got carrying in. So I'm kind of just trying to ramp up the now towards the end of the year to set things up to, to start the year off with a bang. But I think you need to set stupid goals because it, they just don't seem achievable. And then you do it. Like, for example, I fucking ran the ultra marathon weighing 130 kilos, 70 miles. So I was like, that seemed unachievable at the time when I was, I signed up for it when I was going to pick a kebab up. But you can, you just do it if you set your mind to it, I think. Yeah. And if Delusional you success. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. I love it. <laughs> but you just need, for me, it's like I try and reverse engineer it. So I've got the yearly goals. And I just know if I'm turning up every day, that will take care of itself. So I've set some, I've set some like twenty five goals for the year, and some of them are really ridiculous. But like I know that they're not actually that ridiculous if I keep turning up daily because, like you said, I've got that momentum now, and people are wanting to do deals with you. Some serious people as well, like well respected people in property. So you're able to utilize that. Like I was a bit like a fly on the ointment for a lot of them when I moved down here. Because like, who the fuck's this guy? Like you moved down here, doesn't know anything about the area. Like what, what's he playing at? But then all of a sudden, you're just like, your name's popping up that much that you're now doing deals with these people. So there's like one of the guys, I, there was a couple of sources I met up with when I was down there, when I've just moved to try and build my network. One was super helpful and really nice. And one was a total dick and dismissive to us. And like the, the one that was a total dick and dismissive to us, I just wiped the floor room every time. If I know he's bidding and stuff, I'll just go over the top of him. And I was like, we could have been doing business together. And now like, I've just got a pure chip in my shoulder about him. Do you know what I mean? But it's funny because like one of my builders is doing a lot of refurbs for us. I used to do refurbs for them. And he's got like almost a million pound of refurbs booked in for next year from me. Whereas that guy like doesn't speak to him now because he's doing work for me. So it's like, it's almost like he's raging. But the other guy I messaged was like, well, he says, I knew you were going to be good because you're resilient as anything. But like, I don't know why that guy didn't see that in you. And like, we do so many deals together and stuff now as well. So I could have been doing deals with him, but now I've got like, I'm like, I want to crush them. Do you know what it is, Chris? It's, it's envy. Yeah. It's they see this guy, this young lad who's got so much determination, so much motivation that they just don't like it. They don't like that someone else is coming in and seems, because he's looking at you going, I wish I was you. Yeah. that's exactly now that's not his logical mind his logical mind will be like uh, he's in my turf he shouldn't be doing this like he's just got a negative approach to life yeah. and I see this with so many people 
and one thing that I've learned as I've had some more grey hairs in my life as I get older <laughs> is that you've got to collaborate more. Yeah. You know, and, and the first time you have a little bit of resentment of someone else, you need to ask yourself, is that resentment actually merited? Yeah. Because what is the collaboration approach of working with someone else who's motivated, driven, determined? There's so much benefit <laughs> off the back of that. Uh, you know, of course, if you don't get on with them and there's a clash of personalities and it's someone you don't want to spend time with, that's fine. You don't need to hate on that person. Yeah. You know, you can still collaborate or you just don't. You don't want to have that negative energy hating on someone. Yeah. Because we've all been young and naive, myself included, growing up and and having that those moments and use them as fuel when people, right. you know, that that exactly what you've done used it as fuel, going, Well, I'll fucking show you. Cause I'm no I'm not leaving. You know, I'm I'm in this for the long haul. You know, I'm gonna be doing it. And I think that that for me has always been my motivation. But as I do get older, I've really became to a lot more to term come more to terms with doing more collaborations with people and being more open rather than having resentment or envy. So it's his loss. Yeah. You 100%. know, you've been stayed focused, you've been driven. The other sorcerer, it's his gain because he's uh, like, great, I'm going to work with you. I want to do things. <laughs> but you've came a bit of a, a household name within the protege community because, uh, you know, you're you're active in there, you're in sharing, you know, your wins, your losses and, you know, being active and, and helping other people build their portfolio too. And the reality is anyone can do it if they just take on board the things that you're doing and apply it as well, which yeah. is amazing to see. Aye, uh, that's what I say. Like a lot of people message me all the time, like, oh, what are you doing? I was just like, I'm, I'm putting graft in. And a lot of people obviously like to go and meet for coffees and stuff and say, come, I don't want to sit and have coffee. Like I like going ha having coffees with folk, but I was like, if we're going to talk about business, come down, we'll spend time on the patch and like, I'll show you this and I'll show you this and I'll show you this. And you just get so much off the back of it. You can have a coffee while you're doing it. And I just prefer that much more because I'm doing a lot of volume folk are like, how's he handling all this? Like, but like you'll put days on, you'll come down, show them, here's this refurb, here's one that went tits up, here's how we managed it, here's one that we had problems with and how we're dealing with it. And then um, they get a lot, like someone actually said that within Protégé because someone was like, how the fuck is he doing all this? And he was like, because he's up at five, six in the morning and he's just grafting till he shuts his eyes. But he spent a day with me and he saw the phone going off and he saw like I'm doing this and doing that. So they just like see that you're putting the hard work in. There's no real substitute for that. And then obviously when you start to deliver on your work, so I do what I say I will, um, which is another thing. So a lot of people know I'll follow through. So we've just got a deal for someone in the tribe. It's a really good flip. It's a bungalow as well. And like a, people will pay anything for a bungalow down there, but it needs to be done up because obviously it's maybe people downsizing. And our bid was 10 grand lower than the, the highest bid. But the agent said, no, he'll he'll come through with us. So he's got us that offer that's 10 grand less. But that's all the back of building your legitimacy and, and building that relationship. Whereas if I'm just like fresh off the cuff going, right, I want this and I, I'll follow through with that, no bother, we'll do that. Where's the legitimacy there? So you've now got agents going to bat for you, which is half the battle. I had an agent um, that got me a deal. So he went on to the viewing to appraise it and he said, I know someone who'll buy this, Christopher DL. And um, the other agent came out and says, oh, we've got a buyer for this. And the guy says, name them then. And the agent flapped. And Brilliant. I got the deal. <laughs> and then like, do you know what I mean? So it's like, you've got agents going out and saying your name on viewings. And they're just like, it's kind of surreal at times because obviously when you do protege, you dream about going doing all these things. And now you're actually out and it's, it's happening on, under your own eyes. But it's just been that much of a kind of blur. Like we're in December tomorrow and I feel like, fucking where's that year went? Because it's just been... It's just been one mad rush. I've been in all these cool places. Like, obviously, I've been away on a good few holidays and stuff, which I've been able to do through my property business. Um, whereas if I was at work still, you're having to request that time off or you've only got this holidays, you can only go on holiday this time. So you're kind of setting your own own hours and stuff like that as well. But uh, it's, it's surreal, really, and I'm looking forward to, to just keeping building on it and doing a lot of collaboration because if I'm doing 60 deals and I'm trying to manage 60 refurbs and manage 60 transactions, a lot of mine's are co-sources, do you know what I mean? So let's bring stuff together and grow together because it opens up your, your network as well because I'll maybe have investors that don't touch certain areas but they'll touch their ones. So why not get paid for it and, and deliver? But I think that's the main thing for me now is I'm delivering this stuff because... Uh, there was obviously the problem where I could maybe have just had too much on and kind of crumbled under it, um, but I managed to kind of get through it. And I've had some growing pains where, like, I'm having to maybe get more build teams and, and not rely on this person as much because they can't maybe deliver. But I've went through that now, so I know, right, to deliver, I need to have X, Y, and Z in place. So I've got all that in place now, and I, I've been able to kind of deliver good results for people in the tribe. Like, some people have had some, some good returns on deals that I've had, and then, again, they'll just roll it. Like, someone gave me money on a deal. It was meant to be for six months. We got me back in two. 
And then another deal came up in the meantime. He's like, well, I'll just fund that then. So he's getting two for the price of one. Um, and then obviously you're collaborating with people at DX, for example. We're doing one in Gretna just now. The home report is 125 grand. I bought it off a saucer for 78. So he's had a fee. Like I've took the deal and I said to the guys that like, I don't understand why you've gave this away because it's like 140 square metres. We've got a comp, which fair enough, it's a flat, a main door flat, but the comp's a house. It's only eight square metres bigger and it's sold for 250. So I'm thinking when they put their magic on that, they're converting it to a four bed, three bad bathroom um, SA, that's going to be worth 200 plus. And I'm like, why have you not kept that? Like, And he, he says, the more I think about that deal, the more I kick myself. But of the 17 deals that I've bought for myself in the year, nine of them have been off sources. So over half of mine have been for the collaboration, like you said. And one of the guys says to me, like, I know that I can go to an investor, but I know you're that game that you'll just fucking do it and make it happen. So it's like, he's going out and act like the one that said I'm resilient as anything. So he's still getting deals with me. We are co-sourcing together because he knows he'll buy it because first and foremost, I want to still build my portfolio. But then if I can't buy it, I'll get someone to buy it. So he just says like, you do all the hard work because he's quite a few years in now. He's like, I'm quite happy to be where I'm at because he's focusing on other things. But he's like, I know you're, you, you'll get it done. So it's invaluable having someone like that as well. They're shouting you out online and people follow you then. Like people have been following me for months on Instagram, then they'll finally take the plunge and message you. But they already know that I can deliver. So it's really good that you're having people do your marketing for you because he's literally shouting me out all the time. This is another one we've done together. This is another one. And then people just want to get involved because they can see you're going places. But I'm just, like I said, it's just putting the work in really. And there's, that's, there's, that's the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love this. I could chat with you all day, Chris, because yeah. your energy is on point. You're motivated, you're driven. Uh, I see a, ro a lot of, um, you know, resemblance in my own journey as well, which is, I just love it. I love it because you're doing the work, you're getting the results and um, you've got the right attitude and mindset with your whole approach, you know? Yeah. So um, I guess for, for your own point of view, what's, I, I, I don't even want to ask about what's your, your tenure vision, because I think fucking hell it scares me to uh, even think about that but uh, maybe a more shorter term what's your kind of goals going forward over the next maybe you know 2024 or so yeah. and more importantly how can people connect with you and, and reach out uh so i'm obviously linked in myself christopher dl but my, i think my mum was having a laugh when she named this because she spelt it like people think i'm like polish or german and stuff like that because of the way my name's spelt um my, my instagram's dl ventures and then i've got my own personal one which before property, I was just like going getting mad with it and photos and IP <laughs> and stuff. So when I decided I put property in it now and like just cleaned up the Instagram because it's more like a cleansing type of thing. So you get the people like they don't really want to follow you if you're away in houses. They want to go and see like you're going to these raves or going to this event. Do you know what I mean? So I've, um, mainly deal ventures for the property stuff and then Facebook and stuff as well. But I'm not really good on Facebook. Like I, I'm, a guy messaged me the other day about a deal and I had a two minute voice note from him in July that I hadn't answered. I was just like, I'm really sorry, but like, I'm quite active and obviously I've got my WhatsApp and stuff, which is on my van. <laughs> um, so my number's on the van and stuff as well. And then like my, my websites and stuff too. So the old ventures for the property stuff and photos of my dog as well. He's <laughs> probably my best co-sourcer, by the way. I've had about five deals off the back of him and he's quite cheap with the co-sourcing fees as well because he just <laughs> wants a couple of bits of chicken. So, uh, <laughs> um, and then I think... I, Instagram mainly is what I'm most active on. Um, yeah. I've got my website and stuff too. Um, and then obviously I've got my trust pilot as well for anyone where you can search and see people that have all done deals with me. I've got like 77 reviews now and they're all five star, which I'm pretty proud of because they're all genuine transactions. There's um, no fake reviews on there. So I think that's pretty cool to say to someone as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's 2024 got oh, for I you? I forgot to mention that because I was too busy mentioning all my stuff. So I want to buy 20 houses next year for my own portfolio, um, which I think is achievable. Um, especially if you're kind of utilising the creative financing and other people as well and just going for it. Um, so I'm a bit of a deal doer. So I'll, like if I'd like, for example, a deal I just did there, there was a house that went up on the, the street and I knew it was worth 75 grand. It's all been done up. I went in that day and like got it secured at like 57 and a half. But then another sourcer has paid 60K on the same street for something that needs a 10K refurb. So straight away, I've got a really strong comp there. So I, I can go in and just call a deal on knowing that it stacks for the accounting background, but also the year's experience and then applying what you're taught. So I think I'll be able to do that quite comfortably. I could maybe even end up in 30 or 40 because I've done 17 this year. Fair enough, they're not all my own portfolio, but I'm kind of re I'm rebalancing just now. So I'm selling off all bar one of my Scottish ones and I'm just going to put it all down England because I wanted 
put my money where my mouth is really um, and I just think there's massive opportunity down there with the amount of money that's been funded by the government you've got like loads of levelling up funds and there's like a 200 million train station development in Darlington so there's a good SA opportunity because you've got the the power plant as well Middlesbrough and stuff like that so there's so much going on and there's a battery plant that's supposed to be going up in Blythe so but that's just building your knowledge in the area and getting out and about and I'm quite nosy and I like to talk to people so I find out what's happening in areas and try and get in um, so I, I would say 20s maybe even, we'll see how it starts off the year, but that's the goal just now. My goal last year was 10 and I did 17, but obviously I've got all these flips coming off and stuff, so I'm going to have more of a pot to attack. And then obviously I've got all these relationships that I've built that know what I like, so you don't know what's going to pop up in the next few months because more and more deals are coming up now, but that's because I'm I'm telling folk I am buying, like yeah. can, let's do business together. Um, and folks seem to... Some folk like it, some don't. There was an agent that really hated me at the start and she openly said it. Like, she just like, I fucking despised you. But like, she got to know me and she's just like, you're a really nice guy. I don't know why I hated you. And now like, they send me all the stuff first dibs. So you need it as well. Like a lot of people, like you say, they always ask how you're doing it. Be persistent. Like a lot of people will speak to two or three agents and then just give up because they didn't give them what they wanted. Keep going and just let them know you're not fucking going anywhere and eventually they'll have to. And then you become friends with them at the end of the day because they're just people like us. They want, to, they want to sell houses we want to buy. Give it back to them to let it out because I'm the one interested in, in doing anything like that. And then, like, you, you actually realise when it affects more than kind of yourself in a transaction and actually think of the bigger picture. So the letting agent's getting paid if you're getting back to them recurring. You're getting builders that are going to get the work for the refurb. Like, if you start thinking the bigger... You do more as well, I think, because you, you're trying to give back as well, rather than saying, I want to keep that, and I want to get the management myself, and I want to do SM, like try and keep it all. I think if you try and do all that, you just suffer, because I'm good at sourcing, I'm good at project management, and I'm good at analysing deals. So let's just focus on that, and then maybe bring other stuff up. But if I just stick to that and become an expert, rather than try to do 10 things at once as well, because that was another thing when I came out of Protégé, I tried to do everything, and they're like, you can't do it. You need to just focus on a couple of things and become an expert and deliver as well. So... I, I think 20 is achievable. I want to do 100 deals as well, which I think is very achievable because some deals I've been doing five, six a week at times um, and then just raise much more um, long-term finance as well because it's project by project. So I want to raise a million pound next year, um, which again, is, it's not something I've done much of as a long-term financing, but I know that I'm leaving so much money on the table by doing the individual stuff. But I've not really had that confidence to go and, chin someone saying geez that at like this percent over a few years so I'm now at a stage where I've, I've got my online body of work they can see all the stuff I've delivered so I'm in a better position now so I'm trying to focus more on that to, to scale my own portfolio Um, so they kind of go hand in hand with the 20 units and then I've got like some other mad ones like running our ultra and lose this 30 kilos that I put on so that'll all come as a byproduct if I just keep doing the daily basics and obviously I've got a German Shepherd as well so there's your steps covered every day. Um, yeah. So I, it's a, I've got a mixture of big goals, like personal, um, like obviously the, the business side as well. I think it's good to have a mix of them. And then I've got some stupid ones, like go six holidays next year. Because you need to enjoy yourself as well, but don't enjoy yourself too much. Because um, if you just sit and get all this money and you're like, fuck it there, I'll go to Dubai and I'll fly business class, then your pot's wiped if you keep spending like that. Um, so I just keep compounding and growing and... Um, I take over the North East hopefully one day. <laughs> Love it. Brilliant. Chris, thanks for being on your inspiration. Honestly, it's amazing to see what your journey's been over the last couple of years. And I really appreciate you being so open and, and yep. sharing with everyone as well. So so uh, thanks for that. Appreciate like, it, man. Uh, you need to be honest with folk because obviously like it's very it's very easy to give off the illusion that you're doing brilliant. And like someone messaged me like a couple months ago, like you're flying this and that. And I said, mate, I'm I'm really this is what's going on in the background. I showed him and he's like, fucking hell. He, and he, he said to me, he's like, I appreciate you're that honest to you because you just give them, it gives you more legitimacy rather than saying, oh, do you know what I mean? So it's good to be on as well. It's obviously, I had the honour of being the first protege person to be on this as well. So history made today. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Chris. Brilliant. And as always, I'm going to link off into the description and stuff in the, the video, Chris's uh, links to social and stuff so you can connect with him. You should connect with him, follow along with his journey, reach out to him, have a chat with him as well. And of course, if you get any comments, then pop it below and I'll go in there and respond to him. I'm sure Chris will keep an eye on that as well. So look, it's been great. I know you're going to be inspired by this. So all the best and bye for now.